Okay, in this video, we will talk about Faraday's law and also Lenz's law. Okay, so actually Faraday's law and Lenz's law are the laws of electromagnetic induction. Okay, so if you are asked to state the laws of electromagnetic induction, then you know that you are going to explain Faraday's law and also the Lenz's law. Okay, so normally if you are asked to state the laws then you only give this sentence and then you only give this sentence okay these two sentences should be enough to answer this question okay but then i need to explain what are they faraday's law states that the emf induced is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage okay you still remember that emf is the electromotive force okay which is the maximum potential difference across a battery, okay? So, but then you can straight away state EMF instead of electromotive force. And then normally we call EMF induced as back EMF, okay? But then I will tell you why we call that back EMF later, okay? So, you know that the EMF induced is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. And then in the last video, you know that the magnetic flux linkage is NV, okay, which is NB dot A. Okay, so from this equation, you know that in order to produce an EMF, you have to change the magnetic flux linkage by either changing the magnetic of B, which is the magnetic flux density, or you can change the magnetic of A, which is the area of coil, or you can change the angle between B and A, okay, because B dot A equal to B A cos theta, so you can also change the theta, which is the angle between A and B. So just now you already give this definition. But then you have not completed this question yet. So you have to state the definition of Lenz law. Lenz law states that the induced current will flow in a direction such that the magnetic field produced by the induced current will always oppose the changing magnetic flux that produces the induced current. Okay, so this is induced EMF. And then the induced EMF will cause the induced current okay so for example this is a coil if the external magnetic field is increasing then Lenz law states that the induced current must be in a direction such that it will induce another magnetic field to oppose the increasing external magnetic field okay that means that if you say that the external magnetic field is increasing, but then I don't want you to increase. So I want to produce another magnetic field to oppose you. Okay. And then by using the right hand grip rule, you know that if the induced current in, is this way, then the magnetic field is to left. So it can oppose the increasing external magnetic field. So by the same reasoning, if the external magnetic field is decreasing, I don't want you to decrease. So I have to make sure that the induced magnetic field is in the same direction as the external magnetic field so that the external magnetic field, the overall magnetic field will not decrease. Okay, so the induced current should be this way. Okay, which is the opposite direction to the direction of the induced current just now. Okay, okay so Lenz law comes from the law of conservation of energy okay for example now if you move a bar magnet towards a solenoid then the solenoid will repel the bar magnet okay so just now you know that when there is a change of magnetic flux linkage then there should be an EMF induced. So for example, let's say now if you push the bar magnet towards the solenoid, the magnetic flux linkage with the solenoid increases. So there will be an induced 
EMF, and therefore there will be an induced current. And then Lenz law states that the induced current would be in a direction such that it will oppose the increasing magnetic flux linkage of the solenoid. And therefore, when I push the bar magnet here, there will be a north pole and there will be a south pole here. Okay, so that the solenoid will repel the bar magnet. And then you recall that the magnetic flux will come out of the north pole to the south pole of a bar magnet. Okay, so you know that the magnetic flux of the bar magnet is from here to here. And then now the magnetic flux of the solenoid is from here to here. Okay, because you recall that for the north pole, the magnetic flux will come out of the north pole of the solenoid. And then the magnetic flux will come into the solenoid at the end of the south pole. Okay, okay so the magnetic flux will come out from here. And then the magnetic flux will also come out from here. Okay, so they will oppose one another. Okay, so when you try to push the bar magnet towards the solenoid, the work is done by your hand, which is the work is done by the mechanical force against the repulsive force between the north pole of the bar magnet and also the north pole of the solenoid. So you know that the work is done by the mechanical force and then this work done is transformed into the electrical energy because now you have the induced EMF and then you still remember that uh, for the north pole you will see that the current will move in an anti-clockwise direction and then for the south pole if you look at the solenoid from the south pole you know that the current will flow in a clockwise direction Okay, so you know that this is the direction of the induced current. Okay, so you know that the work is done by the mechanical force and then the work done is transformed into the electrical energy because there's an EMF induced. So that's why we say that Lenz law is a special case of the energy conservation law. Okay, so by the same reasoning, if you want to move the bar magnet away from the solenoid, then the solenoid will attract the bar magnet. Okay, so this is not pole, and then this is south pole, so that the solenoid wants to attract the bar magnet when you are pulling the bar magnet away from the solenoid. Okay, so once again, you know that the magnetic flux will come out from the north pole and then the magnetic flux will come into the south pole of the solenoid. Okay, so in this situation, the magnetic flux are in the same direction, okay, which is out from the north pole of the bar magnet and into the south pole of the solenoid. And then you know that the direction of the induced current is like this, because when you view from the, from the north pole, when you look from this end, you know that the current is in an anti-clockwise direction. And then when you look at the solenoid from here, you know that the current is moving in an in a clockwise direction. Okay, so work is done against the attractive force between the soft pole of the solenoid and north pole of the bar magnet. And then work done by the mechanical force is transformed into the electrical energy, which means that there will be an EMF induced. Okay, so actually in order to remember the Lenz law, actually it's quite easy. When when okay, let's say you are the bar magnet, when you want to approach the solenoid, then the solenoid does not want you to approach it. But then when you are leaving the solenoid, then the solenoid does not want you to leave it. So, okay, it's like this. For example, let, let's say you are at home, then you feel very boring, and then you say that you want to get out of your house. And then when you are outside your house, then you will be homesick, and then you want to go back your home again. Okay, so it's like this. When I want to approach you, you don't want me to approach you. But when I want to leave you, you don't want me to leave you either. Okay, so this is Lenz law.
Okay, so just now I mentioned that the EMF induced is also called back EMF because of Lenz law. Okay, because if you want to state an equation to represent both laws of electromagnetic induction, that means that you want to state an equation to represent Faraday's laws and also the Lenz law, then this should be your equation. Okay, so you know that the negative sign here means Lenz law. Okay, and then this one is what I have taught you in the Faraday's law. Okay, so you know that by putting a negative sign here, you are already mentioning that the Lenz law. Okay, so that's why I said that the EMF induced is called back emf okay because the direction is opposite okay so by using a partial derivative and then you know that normally the number of turns is a constant so this is zero okay so this is the equation you should give in your examination to represent both faraday's law and also Lenz law okay so this negative sign is so important In a dynamic microphone, sound waves enter the microphone and vibrate a diaphragm that houses an induction coil in a magnetic field. The energy of sound is 0.35 Joule and all the energy is transferred to the diaphragm within 0.8 seconds. The resistance of the coil is 4 ohm. States the transformation of energy in a dynamic microphone. Okay. So the sound wave energy in, is transformed into the kinetic energy of the diaphragm because you know that the diaphragm is vibrating. Okay, so for any object that is vibrating or that is in motion, you know that there must be some kinetic energy. And then this kinetic energy is transformed into the electrical energy of coil. Okay, because that you know this is electromagnetic induction, so there must be some EMF induced. Determine the average induced EMF in the coil. Okay, power equal to Vi equal to I square R equal to V square over R. And then in this case, we choose V square over R. Okay, power equal to energy over time. Okay, so you know that the energy is 0 0.35 Joule and then time is 0 0.8 second. Okay, the resistance is also given. Okay, so you can find the average induced EMF. Please determine the change of magnetic flux through the coil. Okay, so the induced EMF is the rate of change of magnetic flux. Okay, so the change of magnetic flux is dV. And then you notice that in this situation, we ignore the negative sign. Because we don't talk about the direction of the induced EMF in this case. Okay, so we ignore the negative sign. And then the... EMF induced is 1.32 volt and then the time is 0 0.8 second. So you know that the change in the V, which is dV, which is the change of magnetic flux is 1.06 verbal. So in the next video, we will talk about the EMF induced by changing magnetic flux density or changing area or changing the angle between B and the area vector. Thank you.